para mí. The first things my eyes saw was a bunch of funny monkeys moving nimbly through the branches of a tree. I recognized them. They were fervent monkeys. This is a great opportunity to see how these monkeys move around the trees because most monkeys these ones in particular are arboreal, so they use their four extremities to stay on the trees all the time. And there's a reason for that, and it's not the food, because they eat seeds, and the seeds are on the ground and on the trees. They stay up there for safety reasons, because as you can see, the branches on this tree are pretty flimsy. So if a lion, for instance, came and tried to eat these monkeys, or any other predator, or big cat, for that matter, they could not climb the tree, because the branches are too thin and they're very light, so they can stay up there where it's safe, eating, and out of the reach of the predators, mainly felines and even snakes. It's obvious that one of the main characteristics of these primates is their blue testicles. It's quite common, but it's also nice to see monkeys, the way we see them now, cleaning each other, checking their heads, going around. I feel they are so familiar. It's not that I feel it, they're very familiar and similar to human beings. There are two impalas over there, feeding on the side of the road. Apiceros melampus is their scientific name. And they eat basically vegetation, as we can see. Herbs, sprouts, fruits, leaves. They must be about 13, 16 feet from the car. And they're characteristic, of course, of Africa. Now the males are the ones with the horns and their modus operandi to survive in the wild place is that the males are always surrounding the herd. The males are always on the lookout and the young and the females are inside. The males are in the perimeter always watching, making sure there are no predators around. At the Akagera National Park, there are more than 50 different species of mammals, of which the antelope stands out as the most common and easiest to see. Let's leave these impalas alone and move on to see which other surprises Rwanda, and especially this park, has in stock for us. The map they gave me in the park indicated all the routes I can go through. I had to be careful. I had been warned that these maps don't show the muddy areas, so I have to drive very carefully. If you ever come to Africa, do not cheap out on the car rental. Rent the best and the biggest 4x4 they have available. Do you save in car rental, save in anything else? Save on lodging, bring a tent, find cheap hotels, but do not save money on the car. In Africa, it's very important to have a car you can trust. It's strictly forbidden to leave the road. You have to stick to the roads on the map. The diversity of wild animals one can find here is astonishing. And so the task for every visitor is to look out after this wonderful sanctuary. We are on the road and we have a buffalo about 15, 20 feet from the car. It's right there. 
a huge animal whose main feature is its curvy horns. A herbivorous, a buffalo can weigh 1,300 to 1,500 pounds and up to a ton easily. It's a male. How do I know? Because male buffaloes are black and females are more brown. It's amazing how every time we turn a corner in this place, we see more and more beautiful animals. What a beautiful image. It's a male, and right now, it's about 50, 45 feet away. It's a big giraffe. A giraffe can weigh up to 1,800 pounds. They can get really heavy, and that's why they are prey for lions. It's about 1,800 pounds of meat. I mean, a giraffe can easily feed a group of lions. Each leg of this animal you see here must be at least six feet long. The term giraffe comes from Arab sirafa, which means tall. From here, of course, we can't see it, but their tongue is blue, very dark, very long, about 20 inches long. We're talking about a tongue about this big. Some studies say that the dark color is for protection, to protect the tongue from the heat of the sun. I left with the image of the giraffe stuck in my memory, and so my trip through the park continued. The hottest times in Rwanda are divided into two seasons. It almost doesn't rain from September to December, and from December to February is the least dry period. The heat can reach up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. But travelers shouldn't worry about the temperature when they come to the park, because the many water areas, watering holes and lakes this reserve has allowed tourists to see animals very easily all year round. We are skirting the lake and we saw some hippos outside. Another problem is that we can get closer, they jump back into the water. So it's hard to record them the way we would like to. But the experience of being here is almost impressive. Our job now is double, because we have to see them and also tape them, so you and us can see them outside the water. But if you want to see the hippos, come to this park. Personally, I've never seen so many hippos in one single place. It's hard to see hippos, it's very hard indeed. This place is full of them. Look, there are six hippos, look, look. We got out of the car, and now we're on the riverbank. This is a place where you can get out of the car, and here we have about 12 to 15 hippos. Being near them, at this distance, first of all, is amazing, and second of all, it's unusual. And this park has designated areas where you can do this kind of things, get out of the car, take pictures of the animal that is characteristic of this continent. They park their car and you could do the same. They park next to the river, next to the hippos. You want to swim, Bosco? No, I can't swim. You see, there's a crocodile and hippos in water. Maybe when you go swim, it's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> 
To come to a park like this, you don't have to get your ticket in advance. In other words, you don't have to make reservations from Chile. You simply pay for your admission. This park can be visited both by foreigners and locals. And I think the price is cheap, considering the experiences you have in the park. We found a park that's the park of the hippos. I'd already covered more than half of the park. I was still anxious to find a hippo out of the water. I knew that somewhere in the park I could see one. So I continued to Lake Mijindi, better known as Hippo Beach. We have to drive north, almost to the Nyuangi Gate, the only park exit in this sector. Look, we just arrived in a place called Hippo Beach. But why is it called Hippo Beach? This is the beach where the hippos rest and sunbathe. Right now there must be about 15 to 20 hippos. Now we have to be very careful never to be between the hippo and the water. Hippos always have to have a clear exit. And this way, one can make sure you won't be attacked. We're going very slowly. Rwanda is giving us a very impressive landscape. These are very robust animals, can weigh up to 2,200 pounds. Look at them. They obviously noticed our presence and are getting back in the water. Let's try to get a little closer because those ones are back in the water, but we still have to be very careful. We're leaving this park behind with this wonderful picture, with the hippos in the back. And we continue traveling, navigating, enjoying every inch of this country called Rwanda. Let's go. After driving more than 60 miles all over Akagera in search of the hippos, I left the national park to be on my way, and I bumped into another reality the reality of the rural towns of this African country. I couldn't help but notice the reality of Rwanda, even more when it shows its face undisguised, not sugarcoating, a sad face that hit me deeply. My name is Eric. Eric. Claudio. We are next to Akagena, and what happened is that Eric stood next to our car, and we got to talking. Eric tells us that he loves school, that he speaks English because he likes studying. His parents don't have any money, and he's asking us to please buy him a notebook. He asks us to please buy him a bind notebook. I want to not book about you, I know it's the bugs. Because I'm cooked here, I'm going to school. Thank you so much for helping me. What Eric tells us is that he needs a notebook and a backpack. He says they sell them here, so we're going to buy them for him. Take a look at the store. This? 
No, no. This is a book for you. Yeah. You want this book? Yeah. I mean, the bag. You want a bag too? Yeah. Of course. How many books do you need? Ten. Ten. Yeah. He's asking if we can buy him ten books. And I think it's all for the subjects. And for the whole school year. You know? Rafael Nadal is a tennis player. Pick the bag. The backpacks are up here. You love this? Ah. Let's see. This is nice. Good bag? To go to school. My friend, for you. Give me a hug. Yeah. For you. Thank you. Study, all right? Yeah. Study. Yeah. Vaya estudiar. Nice. Let me see. Perfect. Perfecto. You like it? Yeah. You like it? Yeah, good. Thank you. Study, all right? Yeah. Go to school. Yeah. Most important thing. Done, buddy. We're off. Have a good one. This is the kind of things no one never forgets. And these moments can be yours too, if you just travel. Get your backpack, not a suitcase, a backpack, and travel. Go to see the world and see the most different, distant realities compared to ours. Let's move on. I continued driving through the villages of Rwanda. My goal since I set foot in this country was to find the mountain gorillas. I was eager to see them, but I got distracted by the allure of the villages I passed, thus delaying my goal. We were driving and we heard this music coming from a church. This is the church where, thank God, we'll be able to enter and see some African religious rituals. Jesus Christ of Nazareth Ministry in Rwanda. O sea, el Ministerio de Jesús de Nazaret en Rwanda. They're actually singing and dancing, as they do in many churches around the world. This country is mostly Catholic. As a matter of fact, 56% of the population in Rwanda is Catholic, 26% Evangelical, 11% Protestant. And then there's a Muslim minority. This mass lasts four or five hours here. We know because we talked to the pastor in charge of the church. And he gave us permission to come in and record this. He's the person talking right now. And it's a weekday. So it's interesting that the church is this full on a weekday. And that people can come to the mass until four in the afternoon. Personally, I'd never had the chance to go to the church in Africa. Let's go out so we don't farther interrupt. They did let us, and that was a privilege. My next stop is Nyamata, a city located in the southeast of Rwanda, a 30-minute drive from Kigali, the capital. This country was witness to bloody events and I was searching for a place where cruelty was the main character, the church of Nyamata. In order to understand what happened, we need to go back half a century, when under Belgian rule, a Tutsi minority governed the country. This changed.